Hi everyone, Dia Bondi here for Monday Q&A for Ask Like an Auctioneer. And um, this week's question came all the way from the UK, and I'm going to read it out loud for you, and it's really aimed um, at those of you and all of us, I'll include myself in this, who are uh, independent contractors, folks that run your own small consulting or coaching business. I think this is going to be most valuable for you. So, um, so here's what here's what came to me in email. I'm holding it up on my phone so I can so I can read it exactly. Um, this woman said, "I did a proposal for my contract uh, for a contract that she sent out to a client and got a no, which is what you know I often talk about and ask like an auctioneer to aim for a no." and a response that they might hire me with a smaller budget uh, for a smaller budget training at some point in the future. She said she went back to them with an offer to talk about budget and try to meet their needs and negotiate on price and they never wrote back. They just ghosted her. She asked me, "Have you ever have you ever found someone just ignores you when you offer to negotiate a fee?" Just curious. And the answer is yes. I mean, I've been an independent coach um, all of my career. I, I've had a total of of um, just a handful of years in-house. I've been out of my own forever, and a lot, I work with a lot of folks who are independent professionals who have this experience where you, you, you know, you aim, you aim high with your proposal, you get no response at all, or you get a high thanks but no thanks, or you get a um, you're too expensive without any opportunity to negotiate. Sometimes they come back and want to negotiate, and you can scope down what you're doing or explain the price. You know, every scenario is possible. Um, but here's the thing. When we send out a proposal with a price that maybe is high and your client isn't even willing to have a conversation with you about how to come to a place that um, both in scope and price that makes sense for you both, to me that's a sign that they're not going to be a great collaboration anyhow. You know, I don't want to be in relation, I don't want to be in client relationships and I don't want you to be in client relationships where everything you do is a yes, no test. Instead, you know, I want all of us to be able to put, you know, big juicy rates um, that, that, that risk a no onto the proposals that we send out into the world and use the conversation after that as a way to align with one another. And if they're not willing to come to the table, it's a really good sign that they're probably not going to be a great client anyway. Now, one thing I do know is that that does require some sort of abundance mindset. And in auctioneering, I think about this in terms of, you know, your, your market is bigger than the room. I could sell at auction something to an audience of 150 people in one room and get a certain price and take that same item to another audience, a, a different 150 people, and get a different price. So you don't have to take it as a comment that... Um, you don't have to take it a comment that you did a bad thing or that you're not um, that your work isn't valued at that rate. It just might not be valued at that rate for that particular client. So, yes, this happens. We get ghosted all the time. We also get breadcrumbed, where maybe you get kind of strung along for too long. Meanwhile, you're letting other things go out of your calendar, um, which is a problem in our businesses as well. So, yes, this happens. And don't take it as a sign that you did something wrong. Take it as a sign that they might not be great people to play games with. I mean, the good kind of game, the sit down at the table and do something together kind of game. So that's my answer for today's q and I hope everyone is having an awesome kickoff to your week and um, see you around the bend.